that's Charles Feltman, and that's who I will be channeling this talk today. Um, let me start with a little bit about myself first. Uh, I had an aha moment in a workshop. It was um, the second day of a workshop, and in this workshop, the leader had requested that we as a group be responsible for the whole group, and that we'd be on time. And um, I was sitting there, and it was quite a drive every morning, and it started fairly early in the morning. I was in my chair, and it's on time. There were five or six chairs that were empty, and I was sitting there going, oh, thank goodness I'm on time. And the leader went to the front of the, the course, and she said, where are all your people? And I thought, well, I'm here, and we have a few missing out of 140. That's not bad. And she said, you guys said you'd be responsible. And in that instant, me responsible, I, I could suddenly see myself thinking. I could see what I was thinking. I was thinking, my whole process was, thank goodness I'm not late. Too bad they're not, not they're late. I'm glad I'm not them. <laughs> and I didn't realize, because I always had I was this collaborative team person, I didn't realize that I had an ingrained system based on competition and that their failure was my success. And that that was part of how it worked. You know, I, I was a faculty, there were 600 applicants. They, 599 had to fail for me to succeed. So that was my first aha moment. And then um, the way I met Charles was, um, and Krista uh, Henley and Rosella Derrickson have South Bay Organizational Development Network. And he was one of the presenters. And when he gave this presentation that I'm about to give you a flyover of, it really resonated. I've been in very competitive environments. And I've seen some bad behavior. And there's a cost to that. And so I'm going to jump right in. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to have to do this, because I just got this, this talk yesterday. So I'm going to have to read it myself as I'm going. So vulnerability is a part of trust. And you need it for love and joy. And I need for this the theme that we're getting here is, you know, curiosity, that innate curiosity and joy and, and love of learning, it is innate. And there's a, a connection between being open and trusting and having that be able to show up. So trust, and, and by the way, Charles uses this for his insight coaching. So he coaches at NASA, he coaches in the high-tech community, and he comes from a technology background himself. And he asserts that trust is the basis for Engagement, commitment, accountability, collaboration, innovation, results. Trust is also good for the bottom line. So when they do metrics around what your level of behavioral integrity is, and they just put some measurements around it, they do find a strong correlation between behavioral integrity and how well the business does. It's also good for your health. So having... Um, an area of uh, workplace trust and that, that ability to be in a workplace where people are cohesive and working on behalf of one another actually improves the level of health for each individual person. So this is from Patrick Lencioni, who has a couple of books um, that are specific to this, one about silos and, and uh, turf wars. This one is on five dysfunctions of a team, and if you look, this is in reverse order, because lack of trust, trust is actually the foundation for these others. And if you have a dysfunctional team, you're going to have a fear of conflict, so people don't speak up when something's going wrong. You have a lack of commitment, avoidance of accountability, inattention to results. And part of the debriefing on what happened with the Viacom, I think it was the O-rings for the shuttle, was that there was a lack of, a fear of conflict, of speaking up. Okay, so the definition of trust that Charles has is it's choosing to risk making something you value vulnerable to another person's actions. I think this is a really interesting one. I have to think about it myself for a little bit. And distrust, we might recognize this. So distrust is the decision to protect what I value based on the assessment that it's not safe with this person and it's toxic to the work environment. So this is a very meaty slide. I um, am fully aware of that. But if you just take a minute to look at a few of these things. So if you have a trusting environment, then you're in an environment where you feel of the other person. This person will not harm what I value. 
They're sincere. They're reliable. They have my interests in mind. I'm safe. What I value is safe. I can handle whatever might happen. There's curiosity, generosity, care, gratitude. If you go down to the neurophysiology, you can actually measure the biochemistry of this, oxytocin levels. You have, um, and this is an area that definitely the, um, the organizational development community talks a lot about neuroscience here. So I'm not actually a neuroscientist. I'm a cell biologist, protein chemist, and genomics person. So I'll just take it on good faith, because I haven't gone into the studies. But limbic system, prefrontal cortex, I keep hearing about that. All right, if you're not safe, this person will harm what I value. They pose a threat to me in some way. I'm not safe, what I value is not safe. I'm afraid I can't handle what might happen. I have to protect myself. There's resignation. You have to justify. There's protective actions. There's blaming, arguing, avoiding. We've all been in, in areas like this. And you actually do have elevated levels of the stress hormones. And I myself have, have had this. I've had medical appointments in the past when I was in a high-stress environment. So off the charts. Okay. So I think this one is really interesting. It actually points to another one that he has a thin little bit on trust. And there was something in there that was really interesting that I get a lot of value out of. And I'll speak to that after I go through this one. But a breach of trust is an action you take that unintentionally impacts another person. So it's not even that you knew you were doing it, but you can actually have a breach of trust by a, a consequence, an unintended consequence that you might not even be aware of. And it adversely damages their trust in you. Betrayal is, you know, you know that you're doing it. So we know that kind of trust. But there's a gray area between these two. So it takes some development of that muscle. And one of the things I loved about Charles is he he pointed out this scenario in the book. If you talk to person A, you tell them you're going to do something. And then you go off and you think about it more, and something changes in the environment. And you say, oh, that's not going to work. I'm going to do something else. And then you talk to person B, and you say, I'm going to do this something else. If you don't go back to person A and tell them, and they talk to person B, they're going to think you're giving different stories. I changed my mind. I probably do that all the time. I never thought about that. So that was a real insight for me. It was a real non-intuitive understanding of what, what creates an atmosphere of trust. That's what I love about his work. It's because it takes it to the next higher level by giving you some insight in the human dynamics that we all share. So ways of trusting. The reason I put this up here, because it is, again, a wordy slide, but and Charles, if you're listening, I'm sorry. I've called a couple of your slides wordy now. <laughs> but authentic trust. I want to take your attention to the last one. I trust this person. I recognize he or she may at times act in ways that could breach or even betray my decision to trust. I'm willing to take the risk and do so with my eyes open. I can change, revoke, or reinstate my decision to trust him or her at any time. So it's a dynamic feedback loop where you actually have to communicate and you have to be listening to the interaction and listening to the other person. It's something that's created and created and created. So he has four assessments of trust, and we'll go through them quickly. Sincerity, I'm sorry, sincerity, reliability, competence, and care. I have to my whistle a little bit now. <laughs> All right, so sincerity, you mean what you say, you say what you mean, and you act accordingly. So your feet and your mouth are pointing in the same direction. You're not saying one thing, talking up a good story and doing something else. So um, when you have an incongruity, your effectiveness is diminished. Enemies of trust, failing to update, confusing aspirations with commitments, the different sides of your mouth, we know what that is, probable truths or omitting or withholding. Reliability, managing your commitments so you can follow through on them. When you say yes, to a request, you're actually making a commitment. And it's a commitment to what the other person is expecting, maybe not what you were saying, because it might be a different vision. Okay? So if you say yes to a request when, you can't comp when you're not even sure of what it is, that will breach the trust through the reliability index. Saying yes when you know or suspect you might not follow through. And um, I'm going to wrap up. I have, what, another minute? Okay, I think I can cover a couple more here. I really like this one because I think a lot of us do this kind of request. If you look at, oh, it's almost 9 o'clock. 
you're actually trying to say something else. Please bring me that status report for a nine o'clock meeting right now. And he said, oh, it's almost time. Rather than being direct, saying, please bring me that, that report. It's almost time and you agree to that. So being very direct in our request, and this is a muscle you have to develop. Okay, I'm going to go through these last ones pretty quickly. Um, managing commitments, there are actually tools and processes for managing your commitments, for keeping them in existence. Competence, this is an area of knowing if you have the right stuff or not, and actually even having the support to have it. Okay. So, and if you consistently fail to deliver, you'll lose trust. Um, and a lot of this is about asking for help. And in fact, I do want to just put in one thing. Patricia Dragovich at Cisco had this beautiful uh, image for me of having some, a group or even an individual become high performance as a ground of support and an umbrella of protection. And so a lot of the competence is actually getting that ground of support under you. And it has to do with the environment and the culture. And then care. Caring about the other people. Oops. See how it's done. So trust is the foundation. For results, innovation, collaboration, accountability, commitment, and engagement. And now Charles will <laughs> leave me. But thank you very much for letting me present Charles's information because I just love.